Hi Anderson, it's my honor to be able to address you via this video. And I understand uh, recently after Ellen DeGeneres made some comments uh, about an article that I wrote uh, dealing primarily with the avalanche of what I call gay programming coming into our homes today. Uh, but I heard there was an article written uh, about me and I would like to address it right now. It's a pastor who wrote an article for the Christian Post where he accuses Hollywood of having a gay agenda. Uh, you on your segment, Ridiculous, uh, address some of the things. Time now for the ridiculous, and tonight I'd like to address something sometimes referred to as the gay agenda. So I'd like to unpack this and address you as a friend, and also know this, that I'm speaking from a biblical worldview. Um, I came into a relationship with Jesus Christ 45 years ago. He changed my life, forgave my sins, and he reaches everyone with that same message, and I'm trying to share that gospel good news. So. I then obey the Bible, and here's what I'd like to, if I could, from a biblical standpoint, address. First of all, uh, you kind of made fun of the fact that I said there's a gay agenda, and you joked about secret meetings. Now, I've never actually been to the secret meeting where the gays plot their agenda, though I imagine the catering is quite amazing. But thanks to someone named Larry Tomzak, my eyes have been opened. I don't think things with the gay agenda are being conducted and planned in secret. They're very much out in the open. There's nothing wrong with having an agenda. Let's not be disingenuous about it, but let's acknowledge it. There's meetings in the White House where there's agenda items being pushed, items in the school, changing curriculum, uh, redefining marriage, same-sex marriage. Uh, we see all these things. So I'd say, first of all, um, we need to acknowledge up front that there is an agenda. And one of the leaders in the uh, LGBTQ movement made this statement once, and I'm quoting. He said, the agenda and vision we presently are proclaiming and articulate is to change society. Number two, you made mention of the avalanche and the bombardment of gay program, made fun of that. Larry says there's an avalanche sweeping across our society today. It's not a trickle, it's a tsunami. The mixed metaphor, by the way, is all Larry's. In an op-ed for the Christian Post, he writes, and I quote, the indoctrination and propaganda coming from those advocating a gay lifestyle in our country, classrooms, and culture are increasing. All of us need to take note and take action to guard those we love. We are being bombarded. I think that's very much a reality in our culture today. And even though gay and lesbians are probably, what, 2 to 3 percent of the population, the program today presents it in such a way that it's, it's coming down the pike so fast in such an abundant way that even a, a comedian like Billy Crystal said, back off, get out of my face with some of these, uh, you know, gay sex scenes. It's bothering people. It's just too much. And we know that GLAAD, as an advocacy group, actually gives awards for, uh, you know, those stations and networks that are putting more gays, lesbians, and now even transgender people with programs like Orange is the New Black and Transparent, promoting that as a lifestyle and portraying it. Number three, you made mention of this. You said, Larry said, turn off the TV. Larry Tomzak has a solution for avoiding this gay problem. He recommends that parents turn off the TV and turn on the DVD player so their kids can watch wholesome shows like I Love Lucy and Leave It to Beaver. Now listen, pff, I agree with Larry. I grew up watching I Love Lucy and I'm as straight as they come. Uh, Anderson, I didn't say that. I said let's supplement television programming and where we have children that are vulnerable and impressionable, I did mention wholesome classic award-winning programming like Little House on the Prairie or I Love Lucy and of course Ellen, you know, jokingly portrayed Lucy uh, and Ethel as lesbians. And then I did some research. If you don't think Lucy and Ethel had something going on, explain this picture right here. What's going on? And um, I just say I don't believe that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, number four, I said this, that uh, you boast of your homosexuality, but you said, Larry says that I constantly boast. Uh, that's right, I'm in there as well, me and my constant boasting. I didn't say constant, for the record, and what I'm referring to is you appeared on a show with a married woman who, I couldn't believe it, she said, would you rather have sex with me or a man? And you unashamedly said, with a man. So let's clear that one. Okay, number five, you said basically, let's see this, a program, uh, My Husband's Not Gay. And you referred to that, and that show, although it's controversial that's coming out as a reality show, does portray men who are married but are upfront acknowledging that they have temptations towards other men. And we all struggle in various ways. I would have my struggles at times with other women that are very attractive, but I don't yield to those, and I try my best to live in a way that's honorable 
to God and not just indulge myself, okay? And then you also said, hey, uh, Larry spends lots of time watching these gay TV shows. Ellen said the same thing. Look, the point is gay people are more visible today. And while that makes Larry uncomfortable, so much so that he, as Ellen points out, spends a lot of his time watching and thinking about gay people. If you ask me, Larry's watching a lot of gay TV. And I just say, no, that's not accurate at all. And then lastly, you made reference to the fact that there's lots of, you know, gay men that uh, uh, are not married to a woman and they're daddies. And by the way, if you're a gay guy who wants to be called daddy, you don't necessarily have to get married to a woman. I'm just saying. And that's true. There's many men that call themselves that. But what I'm underscoring is the unique relationship that in a marital union of a man and a woman, there can be conception, procreation, and production of a child. And two lesbians and two homosexuals, that's an impossibility, except people, of course, would say, what about fertilization and adoption? But I'm talking of that unique relationship. So, Anderson, I hope this brought a little bit of clarity. I hope I could one day maybe even talk with you, meet with you. But I want to say this in closing. On 60 Minutes, and I know you're a correspondent, one day I watched you jumping in the water and battling sharks. I was terrified, and I thought, man, that guy's courageous. You are to do that. But you know, in our culture today, there are sharks. There's all kinds of philosophies, seductive ideas that are being thrown, especially at young people and children. And I, for one, want to follow what Jesus said. He said, don't go down a broad road that leads to destruction, but take the narrow road that leads to life. And that's what I'm trying to do. Thanks for listening.